Hello everyone. I don't know why Godot does not have a good vertex painting even by default because that is not really difficult thing to do. But anyway, as I needed one, I created one plugin and I also published that so you can use it. So why you need a vertex painting? As you can see here, I have some cars. One of them is more damaged and one of them is less damaged. So in the shader material which I use, I can use a uniform to change the amount of the rust on my car. But if I have two cars and I want to change the rust amount on each one of them differently, I should make two materials. And this is a serious problem for two reasons. First of all, if you want to make different material for each little change you want to make, managing all of these material is really difficult. Also, this is really bad for game optimization. So there are two solutions for this problem. And each of them has its own pros and cons. You can make an instance uniform. Basically, with instance uniform, you can change the uniform for each instance separately. It is really good, but this has also some limitation. First of all, if your instance number is exceed some number, this will give you error. I think you can have around 4000 instance. If you want to have more, you should change the item buffer size in project setting. Other limitation is that this work only in Godot 4 with Falcon. And if you use Godot 4 with OpenGL, it does not work. Also, this does not work on Godot 3. And the last one is that it changed the value everywhere uniformly. If you look at the bottom of my car, you can see it is more rusty and we have less color. We cannot do this kind of thing with uniform. Also, you can see the second car is different and both of these cars use the same material. The only limitation for vertex painting is that you should use different mesh for each different item you have. But you can copy and paste each of these different items as many as you'd like. And also, for example, you can use the same material for all of the metal stuff in your game. Well, let's see how you can do that. First, you need to download the Auto Vertex Painting plugin which I made. I will put the link of that plugin in the video description. In this video, I'm not going to talk about how you can make this metal material, but I'm going to show you how you can use this plugin. I already have enabled this plugin, so now I create a sphere for testing. Create a standard material for your sphere and in the vertex color section, activate use as albedo. Now that I have this plugin, as I selected this sphere, I can see a V paint button in toolbar. If I click on that, a window will appear, which I can define my vertex color here. So with this plugin, you cannot paint exactly the color you want on your mesh. This is a tool for coloring the vertices uh, really fast. Here at the top section, we have two color, color A and color B, which you understand them in a moment. And we have the surface index. In case you have a mesh with multiple surface and each surface with different material, you can set different vertex color for each one of them and you can select your surfaces here. For now, I just set the color A to a blue color and I just click on the fill with color A. And this will fill the entire mesh with the color A, which is currently blue. So with each vertex, you can pass multiple color information. Array color, the first one is the official vertex color, which you can access that inside vertex and fragment function with color word. Then we have some custom color data, which is only accessible inside vertex function, but you can put them inside a varying and pass them to the fragment function, which can be accessed with the word custom zero, one, and so on. And by the way, in OpenGL renderer or in compatibility renderer, those custom color also exist, but they don't work properly like vertex color. I don't know why, and I, maybe this is a bug for Godot or they work in other way. So now that we have filled the entire mesh with the same color, let's see other options. Here I set color A to white and color B to black. Then in the next section, we can interpolate between these colors in some directions. For example, now we are interpolating from bottom to top. That means the bottom part has the white color and the top part has the black color. 
and the vertices between are going to interpolate some color between the black and white color. You can see we have an option which is called end point. If the end point is 1, it means the farthest point. Now that we are interpolating from bottom, the farthest point is the highest vertex. For example, if I put the end point to half, you can see the effect. You can choose also the smooth step interpolation, which is more smooth, and also a step interpolation, which is like this. But a step interpolation is not always like this. Here we see a sharp transition because we have a lot of vertices. Between vertices, the color is going to interpolate. Even you can see that here. In the same way, you can interpolate in other direction. Now imagine we rotate our sphere. You can see if I interpolate again, it is going to color the same way like before. And that is because we are using the local vertex coordinate. Now if I activate global, it is going to take in account the global position of our vertices. Well now let's see the last option. This option is also going to interpolate between color A and color B, but instead of position, it used angle. So you specify a vector in 3D space. For example, I specify a vector 0 in x direction, 1 in y direction, and 0 also in z direction. In Godot, this vector represents the up direction. Now this interpolation calculates the angle between each vertex normal to the vector you specified. And it interpolates based on that. For example, if I put end angle 90 degree, this means those vector which has zero angle to the vector you specified will have a white color. And those vector which are at 90 degree or beyond that, they have a black color. Here also we have option to change the interpolation type to a smooth step or a step. So this is a really quick tool to make use of the vertex color in your shader. And despite it is really simple, it is really fast and useful. I like it. And if you have any idea to add something to it, let me know in the comment section. Have a good time until the next video.